Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's my pleasure, it's, it's a great privilege, honor to stay connected with one and all of you because we don't get this opportunity in heaven. Why? Because there is no need in heaven to go through the word of God and uh, impose on proof and, um, you know, what I say, escape from that lake of fire and how to stay away from the wilds of the devil. And while we are walking on earth, we go through the spiritual warfares and spiritual battles. Our fight is not with the blood and flesh, but with the principalities and powers of darknesses and um, how to join hands and work in partnership with the Holy Spirit and and the angels that have been deployed, our armies as our workforce who come to rescue us and deliver us and they lead the fight actually, but you are the commander. You are the commander. You don't get these opportunities in heaven. Why? In heaven, there is no sin. <laughs> glory of God. We are walking in the glory of God. As how Adam and Eve never had enemies. They didn't have sin. While they had fellowship with God. While they were walking with God. Talking to God. And it's all about them and God. What a wonderful life, right? That's the sneak peek of what you would enjoy in heaven. You would be able to see the Father. Why was Moses not able to see the glory, glorious face, I would say, glorious face of the Father? Because he says the carnality, the sinful deeds, yeah, is still reigning as Adamic sin in your flesh. And therefore, the day you see me, you're going to be dead. Why? Only if you're dead, you will go to paradise and there you will have an opportunity to see me. And there is no evidence that Father would be around in the paradise. But Father is definitely around. <laughs> in the city of God because it's God's city and if God is not there then who else is going to be around and who else we do we interact and we have fellowship and all that right and there is no evidence of God appearing in paradise of course he is the creator of paradise and every single thing that exists even he is there in hell Bible says no I go to hell I see him I go to a cave I see him I go to in the middle of the sea, I see him everywhere. God is omniscient, omnipotent. But the point here is, here on earth, we cannot see his face. Because why? The human era ended in just two, two chapters. I keep telling you this. We are worthy only for two chapters among, amongst all the thousands of chapters that are in this Bible. Are you all with me? You understand what I'm saying? I hope you do. Therefore, you don't get this opportunity. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm trying to say. And it's nice. It's challenging. Yes. For, for people who have understood Christ, Christ is a warrior. You don't look at him that way, right? Oh, he's not a warrior because he taught, no, one slap you get turned the other cheek. You know, what is that kind of war? It's called as warrior of love. Warrior of kindness. Warrior of compassion, warrior of sympathy, warrior of empathy. And that is the toughest battle that man can cannot win. Yeah, if we are if we were to fight with AK 47s and missiles and MI3 uh, guns and stuff like that, it's easy. Yeah, it's going to kill, destroy. Destroying is easy, but constructing something in the middle of war. Have you heard anything? Ah, what is this new theory? War is all about destroying, right? Yes, but this war we are talking, spiritual war, it does both. It destroys the demonic forces. It constructs the, yeah, the throne of love. The superstructure called as love of God, grace of God. Yeah. Treating one another with a lot of compassion and respect. And this war establishes that kind of superstructure and you build that kind of fortress in love. Which the devil cannot shake. That's why these sessions are very, very important. Where we are helping you to be led towards light. Yeah, And the more you are on the side of light, more you are on the side of the gospel which sheds light. 
and light alone. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. You are all with me? I hope you have started from lesson zero. Today we got a chance to upload the intro session, a video, short video, where we compiled everything that we could possibly do and spoke a sneak peek of what we are what we had been uploading i felt that was a need to just upload the intro session where i have um, compiled it as a shorter version of what is pipelined ahead uh, through these sessions yes uh, so people who would want to go through the series they get an introduction all right without wasting any more time um i i don't think we wasted time but then <laughs> without spending any more time in intros and basics um we would step into the session i think what lesson number 48 47 48 whatever just take a look at it because um i don't have the exact number i keep on talking as in when i get the leading in my spirit and when i get this trigger from the holy spirit yeah keep talking on these lines and i go and talk and once we record and then we upload it as media and that's when we get to know the exact number all right whatever 47 or 48 in the last few sessions we had been discussing about this uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 but just before I get in there I really want to once again do a quick recap of what are we doing here in this series for 47 hours brother are you talking on a single subject yes one subject 47 hours 47 hours is only five percentage of what I actually would have taught why because this subject is the subject Good English, no? What is this subject? This is about your physical anatomy and spiritual anatomy, beloved. Physical anatomy will help you lead your life victoriously, gloriously, or not gloriously, glorious on earth. Yeah, from materialistic and prosperity perspective, which is needed, essential. We are not ignoring that. But we are not only focused like the prosperity preachers speak and it's all about money, cars and all that. Ah, people look at you, how blessed you are. Yes, very true. I agree. But that's only going to constitute 10% of your life after death. Why? Because the more you're blessed, the more you could give others, right? Otherwise, what happens is you will end up in only sympathizing. Oh, I feel so pity on you, my brother. You only won't, you, you not only will feel pity, but you will be able to just put your palms right on, in your pocket and grab that money and give it to the person who's suffering right in front of you, empathizing to how Jesus did. He had appointed a treasurer and he became a devil. So treasurers, be careful. There are higher chances you could get pulled towards that money. Am I talking about the bank treasurers and treasurers who, who are in the trust and charity organizations? No, when I say treasurer, it means everyone. Because why? All of us deal with money, right? <laughs> Is there anyone who doesn't have a bank account? At least in digitalized India, one thing they have achieved is every one of us have bank accounts. Yeah. And you're also treasurer of your own bank account. So deal with your money with due diligence. It's a bad master, but a wonderful servant. Therefore, make me serve you and you don't become its servant or slave. Which is something we discussed from the, not only the money part, right? You have to excel at your workplace. You have to be prominent in everything that you do on earth. Yes. And the way how you talk, people will see there is something special. There is something supernatural at workplace. That's how Daniel was so special. Joseph, very special to King Pharaoh. And how Mordecai become, grew as a strong administrator. He, the man prospered, Bible says. And that constitutes only 10% of your Heavenly life, that is the life after death, and that's called as heavenly life, life in heaven, life in every eternity. But where is your destiny? Is it going to be heaven, city of God, with so many mansions and gates? Described in Revelation 21, John 14, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, and then Revelation 22, also you can see that. Are you, are, are you going to burn in the lake of fire? Revelation 20, 10. After white throne judgment, you're going to be thrown there. Revelation 20:14 is what is the remaining 90% of percentage of your time you got to spend on earth 
why we should spend 90% of our time on earth about the life of the dead brother because that will only tell you what is your destiny brother this is your chance that you have been given this privilege opportunity grace and liberty freedom to decide where you want to reside permanently this is a temporary residence and don't get attached that's what we are saying but we do talk about prosperity yes we have to leave leave behind inheritances to our children your child cannot beg on the streets after you are dead and gone and you will rejoice in heaven and your children beg on beg on streets such people will never make their way in paradise you know that because why you slipped off from your heaven earthly duties and responsibilities and therefore you fail in your um destiny towards heaven that's why we spoke about that first physical anatomy body and mind what do you do with your body what do you do with your life on earth it matters and we spoke about it a lot likewise that remaining 90% spiritual anatomy what am i supposed to do what is this you are talking about spirit is what and spirit and holy spirit what is the relationship between these two and whose soul we have described this enough but on a quick rec recap note spirit is the breath of god that sustains in you and he is the ultimate decision maker working in partnership with either holy spirit or evil spirit and then he leads the body and mind that is your decisions your thoughts your reactions your actions on the right side taking you towards heaven or on the wrong side taking you towards hell for example you are a murderer alcoholic you are a prostitute adulterer yes you know who's what is your destiny against the principles of god and doctrines of god and the teachings and the parables of jesus who came here physically to teach all of these and you don't pay attention fine god says those who fill the let them be more filthy and go to hell that's what it means but he is very gentle eliminating those three words at the end but that's what it means natural meaning spirit is the governor middleware cpu central processing unit which leads the body and mind but depends on holy spirit yes and soul is a person who records all these events witnesses all these events and while he is witnessing on earth his soul i mean his is is emotions are overwhelmed with joy when he sees that the body mind and spirit are connected with the holy spirit and they do the right things on earth therefore he sh he surely knows that his destiny is towards paradise but then when they are doing things on the wrong side falling on the wrong side of their life uh, working with evil spirit the soul overwhelms with grief and we spoke about that a lot and he will end up in terrible sicknesses confusions madness depressions distressions and maybe to the extent of killing yourself yeah when is why is soul very convinced why because it is scary at a spirit and soul were absolutely convinced they cannot lead their life anymore on earth why because they end up in wrong net their doctrines were wrong and why because they wouldn't pay attention why because they wouldn't open their ears Can you believe a guy walking with Jesus for three and a half years of ministry and almost hearing every single word from Jesus, not missing a single sermon, kills himself? And don't look at Judas Iscariot. Oh, what an idiot he was! I'm telling you, that's the power of the devil, who's at work in the midst of mankind to deceive. That's the power of deception, beloved. And that feeble is spirit. That innocent is your soul, and therefore you need help. from holy spirit and the old covenant people were orphaned they didn't have this privilege of working with holy spirit or privilege with the holy spirit they lost the spirit of god too because why sin entered and messiah was not yet sent therefore holy spirit is not yet sent messiah should be taken up after he has resurrected but he is not even born then where is the room or scope for the holy spirit to descend on earth therefore they were so underprivileged unfortunate but we blessed with this richness of salvation grace and blessed hope and uh redemption and deliverance titus chapter 2 9 to 11 yes and therefore we don't use i mean, I mean uh, yet we do not use any of these and who are we we are a bunch of demons because why demons hate gospel hate this doctrines of heavenly wisdom doctrines of messiah teachings of jesus 
and if you are ignorant if you are silly if you are sluggish if you are careless who are you you are inheriting the qualities of the devil devil does it deliberately but then he fools you instilling this sluggish attitude and all that and he says oh i'm a little busy you know i'm really tired after work really if god takes away that work then you will be tired then you will fast and pray for 24 by 7 hmm? and god does that to some brothers and sisters whom he loves who are willing to come but not able to come because work is their hindrance but they sob in the night saying god i'm sorry i'm not able to pray and i'm really tired and god says fine then i will teach you something or maybe he gives them a different job with a less pay and less of work and more of time but when the brothers don't accept it all oh, pay is less oh, no i'm pay is, i have this pay i cannot compromise then he allows job loss <laughs> because why you're not paying attention to what god is trying to work in you you're not following the instructions of god neither are you taking actions for yourself god doesn't have to chastise you if you have made a choice to learn things through soft ways and what is a soft way? learning ball by yourself with the help of the holy spirit paying attention to the leading of the spirit your voice the spirit cries out why because the holy spirit emphasizes and the spirit cries out but body mind rejects saying oh no ah this is not possible you think i am so mad to sacrifice my job for a lesser pay you know what is the growth in this workplace you know what kind of companies is would i get such a job you may not get such a job but you may not get a place in heaven either so which is more valuable you need to decide yeah but i'm i can promise you something i shared my testimony to uh, in the past i have gone through a similar situation when i sacrificed my job because that the, the owner of the company emphasized i need to come on sundays and work for 12 hours i said sundays i cannot come because that's my prayer day i go to church and i spend the rest of my day in prayer in meditation if required i will fast he said i don't care then i said i also don't care and i resign my job and god opened the doors of prosperity only after that and today i can say that and god is my witness he knows and you know what i got a job offer which is 50% lesser than what i used to get paid there and god tested me and you know what miraculous miraculous god five days later he gave me a job which offered me 100 percentage of hike than my previous to pre than my previous pay right that's the work of god that's the miracle work of god <laughs> all right welcome here um, to this session i'm sorry i took a little longer because i don't want to rush the more we re keep rewinding the basics and recapping the foundations what we had said the better it is for you and i still am a great believer in foundations and i am a great believer in recapping it in regular intervals we don't do it all the sessions but some sessions like these as the holy spirit leads me i'm just an instrument and i'm talking to you 1 corinthians chapter 14 we started to meditate and we stopped with verse number 6 and we will continue from verse 7 onwards as a quick recap we were talking about two important nomenclatures which emerges to be the reason and instrument for any man spirit to be um led into misapprehensions misconceptions and deceptions yes and number one is prophecy and number two is tongues and both of these are widely being used as an instrument by the devil more than our god <laughs> uses it right because why it is it has become such a fashion it's become a kind of a you know, world of fantasy with full of prophecies and they call it as christian life and christian congregation and the leading of the spirit and stuff like that i'm not against it yes these are the last days where bible says in acts 217 and joel joel chapter 2 that my spirit will be poured upon my men servants and maid servants in the last days and they will prophesy they will see dreams and visions not at all against it but how do you test the spirit of the person who speaks that prophecy how do you abstain from every form of evil deeds second thessalonians 5 we spoke about that last session hmm? sorry one one thessalonians 5 yeah and 20 21 22 23 take and read it offline 
I keep giving you references. Why? Because I want you to read that Bible after this session or side by side as I'm talking, right? Don't um, please listen to these sessions without Bible. But at this worst case, please read those verses after the session. May God bless you. Word of God gets that enlightenment and it takes you towards the side of God. And that's the only instrument which can patch us up with God. Not your deeds, not my, not your righteous deeds. Right? The word of God only patches you. Okay, having said that, um, we, we, we had uh, provided enough illustrations um, in the last two or three sessions. I think this is the fourth session on. And therefore, what I'm trying to say here is we will continue our discussion from verse number seven, where we are discussing from the word of God what Paul had been trying to narrate here as. What is this tongues without interpretation and what is this tongues with interpretation? And he gives us a command, tongues must be interpreted. Why? Because if you don't have the gift of interpretation, those tongues are not from the Lord Almighty. Because God Almighty doesn't speak in gibberish, but he talks in a plain language. Although you speak mysteries with God, which men cannot understand, except for yourself. But you will get revelation of what tongues you are talking with God. And God is the one who reveals it to you. And with the help of that revelation, you reveal the mysteries of God to the people of God. Sometimes you talk in public, you still need to interpret it. Sometimes you talk in private, you still need to interpret it if God asks you. If it is limited only with you, you will still need interpretation. Why? Because you need to understand these mysteries, else it becomes demonic tongues it becomes the wiles of the devil and many people are fooled they clap their hands and they talk in the same gibberish language time and again rabba rabba shaba shaba this is what i kept here kept hearing in one church for almost 10 no seven years i stayed in one church pentecostal church spiritual church and i always had that question and disagreement in me how come the mystery is being spoken with just one utterance. Okay, fine. You, one utterance is okay. It's between them and God. But then where is the interpretation? The interpretation doesn't... Oh, they give interpretation, but it doesn't seem to be the truth. Why? Because it never seems to happen. It never seems to be the ground reality. May not be immediately, but not after years, not after months. And some of the interpretations, at least once in a while, it must be instantaneous. Yes? And these are the different aspects what we had been discussing. Therefore, you can safeguard your spirit from deception. Why? Because the, oh, the very place from where the deception begins is the church. Am I saying the church is like a bunch of demonic forces? Don't go to church. No, you go to church, but, the test is, but test the spirit. That's the exhortation. That's a commandment from the Bible. Test the spirit. Spirit with spirit, spirit of your own pastor, spirit of the preacher, spirit of the believers, spirit of the elders. You understand which place you are sitting is the spirit of Antichrist ruling that place. What have you got to do in that place? And they still use Bible, brother. So what? The devil used Bible better than you and me and he argued with Jesus. Do you know that? Yes, you know that. Matthew 4, Luke 4, you take and read. Does it mean that he has accepted Christ? Does it mean that he is worshipping the Son of God? No. For a moment he left Jesus, Bible says. And he is getting ready for the next argument. If he can be dare enough to argue with Jesus and take him towards a side of deception because he has taken that humanly, humanly form of blood and flesh. Imagine. Are we very serious like Jesus? We spoke about Jesus. At the age of 12, he was all done with the scriptures. Because why? It took him so much of effort from the age of 5 all the way to 12. Seven years almost he should have learned. It was not given from above, but he acquired it while he was walking on earth. Even as a little lad, little boy. Can you believe? Little boy going to the synagogue and asking the priest to describe and all that. And therefore, he was able to challenge the rabbis and scribes and Sadducees who circled him. And he was able to answer those questions very easily. None of them were difficult for him. Was it packaged and given from above? No, absolute lie of the devil. No, sorry, that's not the truth. The truth is, he worked very hard and he strived for it. He was very serious on his Christian walk with God. 
or Christ like mindset. And therefore, the place where you go, with whom you interact, whose doctrine are you following, and who's preaching and teaching to you, you have to really believe. Be like those Bereans who would not even trust Paul. And they would say, Brother Paul, fine, tomorrow we will come back to you. They go to synagogue, they check the scriptures. And then they come back and say, okay, Paul, fine, we agree with what you have told. Come on, let's move on. Huh. Are you such a Christian? Then where is the room for deception? Tell me. All right, verse number seven on which we will meditate today, right? We are talking from the tongues must be interpreted. Even things without life, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how it will be known what is piped or played? Wonderful illustration, right? I'm actually having a great passion to learn drums. But then before I could buy one drum set and enroll myself for a course, I didn't know that it is so difficult to play drums. <laughs> Why? Because all these days I was drumming on, the, on any hard surface like, you know, uh, your dining table or your desk or something like that. And I drum beautifully, only using my 10 fingers. Yeah, and a little bit of my support on the palm. Many of us do that, right? And a little bit of whistling and all that. And I love that, right? And I just, I, I just do it to, as a stress buster, I do it. When I'm overstressed, I, I just do this, sing some songs and hymns and drum it. I thought, okay, it's as simple as this. And let me get the drums. And I got my drums and I start to play. You know what it sounds like or sounded like to me? Like, uh, sounded like to me. It, it was just a noise in my ears. <laughs> All these days I was drumming on the hard surface. It was music in my ears and I enjoyed it. It, it was my stress buster. But now this noise in my ears became a stress. It's not stress buster anymore. Therefore, I had to enroll myself for a course. And I have hired a tutor who would teach me systematically. Very, very tough to make time in the midst of my part-time ministries and my actual job. Um, I'm, I'm working in corporate industry. And why I'm saying all of this is the sound as much as when it is distinguished, when it is played according to the tune, when it is in a hearable format. Hmm? The display of that music is in a hearable format. Anybody can go and start using their fingers on the keyboard. They can start playing, but it will be noise in your ears. You will, your head will f almost burst. I, I really cannot take in this noise pollution. If stray dogs are going to bark in the night, the whole night I'm not sleeping. I don't know. I'm very sensitive to sound, noise. That's the way how God manufactured me, and it's nice. I like to be sensitized to any sound. Right, The voice within my heart, that is my spirit. When, when, when my spirit cries aloud, I'm sensitive. When my Holy Spirit is grieved, I'm sensitive. At the same time, when the stray dogs also scream, I'm sensitive. <laughs> what to do? Because why? The same character is very useful and helpful even in my spiritual walk. And therefore, it's fine. Even Although I don't sleep all night, yet I love to be sensitive to the sound. Why am I saying this is because... Two things we are learning. The first thing is be sensitized to the voice of God. Have that keen, uh, be the keen observer and be the keen listener as what this voice right from within you is talking to you. Oh, when would I hear this voice? Every moment that you're awake, even while you're unconscious, sometimes you see dreams and visions and God talks to you. Be sensitized to the voice of God 24 by 7, all 365 days. Sky is the limit as far as this aspect is concerned. Many people ask this funny questions and that includes me. I was also having that question. When would I be hearing that voice? When should I tune my ears? And I was thinking my physical ears. No, Bible talks about the ears of your spirit. Your spirit also has that mouth, ears and eyes and all that, right? Through that ears, it receives input from the body and mind. And it has mouth to talk to the Holy Spirit and again receive back the Output from the Holy Spirit through the ears and then opens its mouth and talks to the body and mind. Spirit, those who have ears, let them hear. 
but yeah physical ears is definitely needed if your deaf doesn't even travel inside agreed but then the actual ear that jesus was referring actualized that jesus was referring was the eyes and ears of your spirit and be very sensitive to listen to that voice and when you hear that voice every moment brother every single incident every decision that you take and i explained it right in life everything is a decision what is that sit down in sitting sorry sitting down is a decision rising up is a decision walking forward is a decision running is a decision jogging is a decision having glass of water is a decision taking this medicine or not is a decision saying no to the demonic forces or yes to the lustful deeds is a decision or saying no to the lustful deeds and saying yes to the bible reading decision everything is a decision and how do you decide you need to be focused towards the leading of the spirit and leading of the spirit is a voice that you can hear but you need to coach your mind and body to be sensitized and to stay focused and that's why here he pulls in an example the noise which is created by these uh instruments versus the music that is created by this instrument when it is played with the right notes right you follow the notes and you you play in the same um what what is that that minor scale or major scale or something like that i'm not a keyboard musician i'm a good listener i enjoy music and i can only drum and i'm okay i i know 10% to drum i'm i have still 90% to learn <laughs> so i'm a beginner in drums too but my my point here is the musician as much as they are focused on the note they have a discipline to abide and they slip on that note little bit little bit need not be too far away or deviated completely that means it's absolutely noise you carry a 5 year old and this is 5 year old is able to drum better than me i i was i happened to watch a video where one one of the chinese kids little little girl girl uh, child 5 year old oh my goodness the way how it was drumming i ended up watching that video for 25 plus times somebody is asking me brother aren't you wasting your time brother sometimes you need relaxation it's okay admiring a kid is as good as like inviting the kingdom of heaven jesus said that <laughs> i also have a brilliant answer for your question right the one who receives the ch children um, is the one who is going to receive the kingdom of heaven Sim similar to that i was admiring the kid so i mean to say take a 3 year old kid for example right it, it's it's learning to uh, acquire skills and knowledge you give that a drum or a keyboard or a guitar what happens with all enthusiasm with all that energy yeah it 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 scrubs the strings and trunk 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 all the some music and it, it it thinks it's a music who the child and it enjoys correct no it enjoys but the person who is listening absolutely irritated but you cannot show long faces why the kid immediately gets sensitized how dare right and it starts to weep and roll on the ground and gets demotivated so you all pretend oh what a great music and all that hmm? exactly this example fits in almost all spiritual churches yes you don't want to disappoint your pastor you don't want to disappoint your so called disciples of the church and etc therefore you also pretend you are enjoying and you also clap your hands and speak in that gibberish and that's the noise in the ears of god and god walks out of your church and he goes and stands somewhere outside the church presence of god has left your church long ago and church also means your own body which is the temple of god in biblical standards yeah you're all with me or not that's why he's pulling an example of instrument and i'm narrating it even better with the help of the holy spirit right he is doing a wonderful job explaining it are you like that 3 year old kid are you are are you like that 5 year old kid although the kid is very young it's still a lad 5 year old means nothing right but still it is very diligent it is very careful it is very serious it observes one thing that i am a professional yes it takes pride in all that the kid does my age doesn't matter it doesn't even know that it is just 5 years old it's about the attitude bella but age doesn't matter you see that 12 year old boy jesus attitude versus the 33 and a half year old 
man hanging on the cross in three nails and bowing down before God and praying for his enemies. Oh my God. They knew not what they are talking and forgive them. Same attitude travels all the way from 12. And I told you from the age of five, the attitude is rejuvenating or man attitude is given birth and it all the way travels to 33 and a half even few few hours before his death attitude doesn't change but what was the basic principle serious attitude that's it are you serious of your christian life are you serious after your of, of uh, are you serious about your life after death and where your destiny is going to be that tells you're on god's side or not and that's the kind of checklist we are trying to manufacture from almost every single verse that we are reading and meditating. This is one of the checklists, beloved. Two, two things we spoke, right? Two checklists I gave you in this one verse. One is like, are you sensitized to the voice of your spirit, voice of the Holy Spirit? Voice of your spirit and voice of the Holy Spirit. Both are important. Got it? Why? Why? Voice of the Holy Spirit is important for spirit. That, that means you need to coach the ears of your spirit to be sensitized to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And you need to coach your body and mind. They also have ears. Apart from those physical ears are hanging outside. Some people's ears, ears are like that elephant ears. Big one. But they hear nothing. <laughs> I'm not talking about those ears hanging outside. But the ears of your mind and ears of your, you know, the, 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 the physical anatomy focusing or you know what is it being sensitized to the voice of the spirit who is ultimate uh, communicator or mediates between you and the holy spirit that's one aspect second aspect is watch out on what you talk to god is it like a music note a keynote and therefore you play according to the rhythm you speak according to the teachings you abide in the laws and commandments of God and you correct your lifestyle before you get into the presence of God or at least after getting into the presence of God. Do you go through this confessions and asking for forgiveness and then you conclude your repentance and then you can reconcile and then you go through the cleansing touch of God and then you are pronounced as righteous. You get that feeling, you get that confidence and then you open your mouth and uh, to speak on the supplications, whereas our people straight away they enter into praise and worship and thank Him, which is not bad. But then you you have a procedural way of reconciling God with God first. You don't have the connectivity. That means what? If there is no signal in your mobile phone, you cannot make calls. Oh no no no! It is possible to talk and what? You are talking to yourself, brother, because there is no connection. There is no tower. There is no signal. You have common sense, don't you? As much as as much as of uh, that common sense which works in the simple mobile connectivity. Why is it not working in you as far as your spiritual connectivity is concerned? And your tower is God. Yeah? And the signal which travels is your spirit and Holy Spirit. They work together to connect with God only then. And how, it, how do you connect? Through reconciliation about which we spoke, right? I taught you from 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Reconciliation. A lot we spoke. So the point I'm trying to make here is else if you if you don't I, the second aspect if you don't fall in these principles you don't abide in these doctrines then it's like that noise which the three year old is scrubbing the strings in the guitar and creating that noise but it thinks it's a music poor kid three year old kid God looks down on you oh my poor three year old kid yeah. And he doesn't pretend as if enjoying because he's not that heaven, earthly father. No, he doesn't pretend. He's God of truth and honesty. He's just God. But then he's, he is definitely sending enough messages and signals that he's not listening to you. Why? Because your prayers are not getting answered. Simple as that. You get into prayer and you walk out with your, uh, after, you, after uh, submitting your supplication list, do you walk out of the after the after prayer room with confidence? Because why? Your spirit and soul will be overwhelmed with joy. I told you, right? That's the assurance. Like, do you do you go through these experiences or or not? Yeah, your spirit overwhelms in joy. Your soul overwhelms in joy. Why? Why? Because you have the assurance. You made the connectivity. God heard it, and you are absolutely satisfied and confident, and you have faith. It is going to be answered. Is there a day 
or is the, is this the mannerism in which you walk out of your prayer room after your prayer or opening the door and your wife or mother somebody stands outside hey i was a prayer somehow i made a prayer let's see what kind of attitude is that that was prayer without connectivity that was prayer without reconciliation that was a prayer without realization that was just a noise in the ears of god yeah you understand both aspects similarly now i am coming to the original point the third aspect the last aspect is when you speak in tongues without interpretation yeah without without interpretation is also it, it also means uh, without revelation yeah if you are involved in this kind of um what is a um act uh, these kind of activities or manifestations then what happens is um it's as good as like noise in the ears of every member in the church why because they just hear enough some noise out of your mouth i took little time therefore you get time to process i somehow felt i'm rushing a bit today sorry you you're all with me right i gave you three different narrations explanations illustrations in this one verse uh, where uh, paul is talking about sound that's the word see always you need to circle words in your bible do you do that you have the habit of circling words isn't it what is a centric word connecting word sound and he's giving some explanation before and after which you need not ignore should not ignore actually but you should get that what to say the focal point the connecting word the focal point here is focus sorry sound <laughs> focal point is not focus focal point is sound right and we are talking in three different ways in three different languages in three different narratives but all three are talking on the same lines conveying the same meaning but three different aspects this is how you should read and meditate bible right now in the middle of the church you clap your hands you could be a pastor you could be a disciple you could be a deacon you could be an elder you could be a prayer cell leader or a, you could be a worship leader you could be anybody but the person who but a bunch of people or a, or a person who listens to you will only hear the noise but then while he was thinking he's hearing some noise you take a pause and you're filled in the spirit of god that is holy spirit anointing and the gift of prophecy through tongues and then you speak in his own language saying hey this is what god is asking me to tell you because i have the revelation i have the interpretation of the mystery which i spoke with god just now and god spoke to me in mysteries about you or about the church or about the world or about the economical condition or about the struggle which that brother sister is going through some illness you are going to talk and then he awakes ah what a revelation <coughs> excuse me he amazes could god work in this way can you believe what a revival it will be in the spirit of that brother or sister who is listening to you don't you think you are such a great instrument in the hands of god you are like god to them yes this is how joseph was looked and even today also he was um, given a different name by pharaoh right it's in the book of uh, genesis chapter 41 he is called as um, what is that um, come on i'm reading it from the book of genesis uh, 41 pharaoh called him and he gave him uh, yeah zafnat uh, uh, sorry Z- uh, yeah zafnat pate zafnat pania zafnat pania sorry zafnat pan- very tough no these days joseph means it's very simple clear easy to pronounce zafnat pania how can i un- how can i remember this sometimes it's difficult but i need to remember you go and talk to any egyptian even today also zafnat pania yeah 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 there is a temple yeah there is a god they have even engraved this image and kept it. even the ancient days uh, pictures are available joseph's picture and they call him as zafnat pania and he's a god to them they worship him you're going to be looked like look like that and how the crowd looked at um, peter and john the similar way gold and silver we do not have in the name of jesus get up and rise they immediately start to sacrifice the bulls 
and these two guys never had glory in that they they tore their clothes and they ran like mad people insane people and they got scared of them and they start to beat them almost to death and they i think they handed them over to the soldiers and they were jailed or something like that i don't remember the whole story it's in the bible you can read yeah but they never they refused their glory don't oh men don't give glory to us that will be your reaction brother after you interpret it don't get carried away that's another instruction which also i want to be mentioning very clearly don't don't feel big headed don't be filled with prejudice pride huh ah look at me you see i am like god to this people you are like god but you are not god that should keep you humble yeah keep making that statements i am like god and thank god for making me like god and you know what if you are a true brother in christ you will encourage your brother who's listening to you hey brother you are also like god we are all created in god's image while i have this gift god is definitely going to give you a good uh, a gift which is even bigger than this why because god sent all of us to this world with a divine will and plan and the divine will and plan for me is to speak in tongues and interpret it that is no big deal that likewise you need to see god who knows you could be the miracle worker you could be the great teacher of the bible yeah preacher of the bible or you could be a person who's filled with spirit of knowledge and wisdom and you're going to lead the people um far away from this deception and this confusions and you are going to lead them towards the side of god this is how you will admonish and encourage and you will not take any pride but my point is not about that my point is what a great change and revival revolution you bring in the in the in the, in the mindset or hearts of the believers tell me amazing isn't it you see there is a three way explanation in this one verse <sighs> my goodness my time is up my time is up sorry i have to stop here and we will continue from where we left okay we can cover one more verse <clears throat> i will take only 2 minutes because it's very tightly coupled with the same focal point sound next verse is also tightly coupled with that for if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound who will prepare himself for battle <clears throat> see there is a specific way to play the trumpet olden days no before the war starts they will blow the trumpet or to alert the army that the enemy is coming because they will have a tower house which is going to be 100 feet up from the ground level and there will be few soldiers deployed 24 by 7 they'll be watching over that place uh if they fail any traces of uh, enemy approaching then from there they will be blowing the trumpet in a specific uh, tune right and that un- that that is the tune of alert there he is going to alarm or alert but imagine if the guy is going to blow the trumpet uh, with the tune of war for war ready for battle in the, if the if, if that tune is going to be blown then these guys are going to already get inside the battlefield for war so what happens it is like a uh, what to say a tune of deception or a tune that misleads you and this is exactly what god is saying here hey you speak in just tongues without in- interpretation it becomes like that um, wrong call for right reasons <laughs> the reason was right he wants to alert but then he is playing the tune of entering into the battlefield no you are just alerting them to be prepared the enemy is not yet come maybe his enemy is coming to leave a peace message you need to wait and therefore the captains are just getting out of the fortress and they are readily waiting for the enemy to come to make the right decision and the captain also will be having a <clears throat> trumpet in his hand and he will be blowing it alerting saying that hey 10 people follow me they have multiple tones and tunes or the voice of tum- trumpet right tune of alarm for different reasons under different circumstances and all that it's all part of their camp uh, sorry army camp training and that's exactly what is telling here yeah one way he picks up the trumpet that is used for war and the same trumpet will be blown in the mid air where you will see jesus coming with an army and you will be joining him in the mid air and then again he will come for war right all these are battle related aspects and this trumpet is nothing but equated to the voice of god and that's nothing but here technically speaking interpretation of god 
you don't get the interpretation of god then you are pointless you are you are you are alarming in a different tune which they have not even learned what is that the tongues which you are talking without interpretation is like that trumpet sound without a tune or without uh, something that they have heard before correct they they should be coached in certain tunes and they understand oh this tone means this is uh, alarm tone this is the tone for war this is the tone to just follow the captain something like that but here you are talking in a different language it's just a noise in everybody's ears we initially spoke about the music note now we are talking about the note uh, from the trumpet as an alarm for war yeah i hope you learned something i i hope you learn many things we spoke about lots of matters we will stop here in verse number 8 and we will continue from verse number 9 in our second session uh, sorry next session and then uh, we it will take little more time to close on this prophecy and tongues because it's a very very detailed subject and i don't want to rush heads bowed on eyes closed heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time of fellowship and we appreciate your mercies and we are thankful to you lord that you are teaching us in a very very personal way in a very special way that we are able to understand the hidden treasures the secrets of the gospel we thank you and we bless your holy name in jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and relatives be an instrument in the hands of god to spread his word god bless amen